Hi folks, I'm Meath with Two Guys Riding, and welcome to our how-to video on the 2020 Chevy Traverse, and this is the Premier Trim Level. Today, I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today, we're working with our friends at Snell Motors in beautiful Mankato, Minnesota. So to start with, we're going to take a look at the driver's information uh, screen. And so you've got an analog tack on the left, you've got an analog speedometer on the right, and then a fuel gauge and an engine temp gauge uh, analog, both of those at the top. Now in the middle, you've got the driver's information screen uh, that's digital, and this is where you can configure things. To do that, we're going to use the four arrows and the uh, check mark button on the right side of the steering wheel. So if I go left or right arrows, I'm going to go through a bunch of menus. So I was just on home, now I'm on information, media, navigation, phone, and then finally settings. So we're going to go back. On the home screen, this is what you get. There, there is no changing that. Hey, but you do get uh, s uh, traffic sign recognition, your digital speedometer, and of course, miles to empty, as well as your compass on the bottom left, and then your odometer, and your gear uh, selection at the far bottom right. Now, if I go over one to the information pages, here I get a few more things. So I'm gonna go down, here we got just traffic sign and digital uh, miles per hour. Here I've got trip one, and if I want to reset any of these, you just push the check mark button to reset. Okay, trip two, fuel information, range and instant uh, MPG, oil life, tire pressure, uh, air filter life, fuel economy, gives you an average and a best, which is kind of interesting, a timer, battery voltage, and a blank page. Hit it again and you're back to the top. Now, if I click the check mark button, I go into menu, and then I can say, well, I don't want speed sign on, and I just click the check mark, and if I exit, I'm just gonna have my digital uh, miles per hour. So that is where you adjust that, and you will see that uh, little menu symbol on several of these screens. So if I will go here, okay, and I'm just gonna exit by going left. I'm gonna go down here to another one that has menu right here, air filter life. If I click here, I can reset, disable, or exit. All right, and then it'll be the same anytime you see that menu button. Um, you can uh, look at the distance, and you can change the distance for that and you reset the best score and you can exit. Of course, you can always push the left button to exit as well, but that's what that menu button does. Otherwise, it just says reset, for instance here, and you just click and hold and it's gonna reset it when you change your oil, that kind of stuff. Okay, let's press, press the right button, media. Okay, so now, right now, I just it shows me what's playing. If I uh, press the up or down button, it go, it scans, I should say, to the next station. If I press the check mark, I get a menu. Now here I can look at radio media, browse media, uh, favorites, and favorite button setting. So let me go to radio media for a minute. Here's where you can choose your different radios. Or my phone, which is, you know, that's nice. Not They don't always show your phone there. So that, that's really nice. Okay, I'm gonna go back one. You can browse media. So if I can look on my phone and I can go ahead and I can browse. Okay, so let's see, let's see. That's iTunes radio. Okay, so it's not looking at like Pandora or anything else, but it is uh, stuff on my phone. So if I look at songs, there you go. Pulls it right up. I'm gonna go back again, go back one more, go back one more. Let's go down to favorites. Here's your favorites that you've preset in your infotainment screen. I'm gonna go back again. Favorite button setting. All right, so on the back of the steering wheel, on the far right, you've got two buttons. On the right side, you've got volume up, volume down. And then on the left side, you have two buttons again. One goes, uh, brings up, well, they both bring up favorites. One 
will scroll through this way and the other one will scroll through the other direction. So you can instantly get to your favorites just with a, with a, with a button there. So I'm going to click that. Okay. If I want it to seek okay, and set that, I'm going to go back. Let's go to FM radio. All right. Now my left behind the steering wheel control buttons function as a seek, not favorites. And again, go back to media, hit menu, go down to favorite button setting, and if you wanted to do favorites, check mark that. All right, let's go back. Um, uh, go back again. I'm gonna go to the right. Navigation, so this does come with built-in navigation, and you, you will get your turn-by-turn -turn directions here, but you can also get a menu, so we're gonna click right here. You can look at recent places and then click on them to go or favorites. So while you can't program a route from inside the driver's uh, screen, you can select anything recent or favorites, click the button and it will, it will take you there. So there's, there's nothing there yet to, to program, but that's what, what you could do with that. Okay, I'm gonna hit the back arrow again. Now I'm gonna go to the right, go out of navigation to phone. So I've connected my phone via Bluetooth. Okay, so I can see my phone, and if I um, go right here in the check mark, I can look at recents, contacts, favorites, and then I can make a call from there. If I click on contacts, um, it's not going to show up because I don't, I didn't allow mine to sync. If this were your car, of course, you would allow to do that, and then you could select them and press, and it would call them for you. Uh, way easier just to use voice command, but that's how you would do it physically. All right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back again. Now I'm going to go to the right one. All right, last page. So this is where you can set some things. So for instance, you can change the units to US or metric. Okay, I'm going to hit the back arrow to exit. I could just go down to exit and do that. Info page options. This relates to these pages. So I'm going to go back here. Click on here. Here's where you select what will show up. So anything that's checkmarked will show up. And I believe, oh, follow distance. Let's add that. And let's add driver assistance. Let's add economy trend, eco index, and off-road. What I like is that they allow you to select everything. They're not limited to like eight options. Now if I go back, we're going to see these show up in this information page. Okay, there was follow distance, driver assistance we didn't have before, economy trend. So you get what I mean. So those are where you add those. This is the home screen, right? You can adjust a little bit what's there. So if I go here and I go down to home page options and click, I can choose to not have the speedometer, not have the speed signs, uh, time and fuel range. So let's go to um, just time and fuel range, okay? I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to go to home. See, I get time. There we go. <laughs> I was wondering where that was. Time and fuel range. Okay, I want to change that. I want to see more info. Go to settings, go to home page options. Now I'm going to say, yep, I want speed sign recognition and I want a speedometer. That's all my options check marked. I'm now going to go back to home and I should see all of those. And there they are. Okay, so that's how you can customize those a little bit further. Um, speed warning. If you want that on, what it's going to do is warn you if you're going over whatever this says, 55, 56, 57, you can adjust it. Okay, and then you would go over here and click the check mark. I'm going to cancel. I'm not going to leave that. But all right, let's go back one. And then you have software information. Okay, that is it for the driver's information screen. Next, we're gonna move over to the infotainment screen. Okay, so the infotainment screen is an eight inch screen. It has a uh, Bose 10 speaker sound system. And this is based off of the Chevy Infotainment 3 premium system. Now it does come with Sirius XM 360L. 
Um, you do, of course, have Bluetooth audio. You can have two phones simultaneously connected to Bluetooth, so your passenger could be connected and decide to play their music instead of yours or vice versa. Uh, it does have, of course, navigation. It has wired Apple CarPlay, wired Android Auto, uh, and then, of course, AM and FM radio, and then a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot. If you swipe all the way to the right, you get a split screen. All right, so... Let's go back to the apps here a minute. I just want to point out that there are shortcuts that constantly stay here. This is for home, media, phone, navigation, and climate. And of course, your, your uh, phone signal, this is coming off your phone, shows it's hooked by Bluetooth, shows your battery level, and then your 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot signal, uh, outside temperature, and then clock. Okay? I will mention you can just click on the clock to change it and then you can go through here. All right, back to the home screen. You do have a few physical buttons down here. You've got a home, you've got a skip forward, skip backwards, or tuning buttons. And then this one opens up this magic uh, compartment back here where you just have some storage, okay? Or maybe you just want the infotainment screen higher. Click that again and it should come down. There we go. All right, and of course you have a power on off and then a volume right here. All right, well, let's start by talking about the, the apps here. So let's start in audio. So in audio, you're gonna get your AM, your FM, your Sirius XM, and then if you click more, you're also gonna get your phone. And right now, I'm connected via Bluetooth, and later I'll do uh, Apple CarPlay. Okay, so common questions are how do you tune? Well, you can scan forward or backwards. You can hit the tune button, enter a station if you want, use these buttons if you want. You can star something if you want it as a favorite or on star it. You can also use these buttons right here. So those are the ways that you're going to tune. If you want to browse, you can go through here and you can look at the available titles um, for the available stations as far as categories go. All right. Second thing is how do you store a favorite? So let's say we want to make 97.5. I'm just going to hold and now it's set as a favorite. Now, you can see the two dots up here. That means I've got another screen of favorites. So the question is then how do you manage your actual favorites? Let me, let me tune to something else for a minute. 99.1, if I go here, you see, I just over overwrote that one. These are grayed out because uh, Sirius XM is not started on this vehicle. It's available, and the the you know the dealership would start it for you as, as part of the the sale. But um, that's why they're grayed out. But you can overwrite those. But to manage them, okay, I'm gonna go to home for a minute. I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna go to apps, and I am gonna go to, I believe it's audio, yes, manage favorites. Okay, so here's my favorites. See, here's where I can delete them. Okay, and I can hit undo if I got a certain amount of time to undo. You can rearrange the order. Oops, let me grab that good, there we go. Or I gotta hit the pencil and I can edit the title. So, wanted to point out where that was. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna go back to home. Actually, we're gonna go back to audio. Okay, so that's how you manage your favorites. Now, last thing to talk about here is how you adjust your sound. So if I go in here, you've got your equalizer, which I don't think you can drag. Nope, you gotta click. So you do have to use the arrows, which I wish they'd allow you just to click and drag. Okay, but there you got your bass, mid-range, and treble. And then if I go to fade and balance, that's going to be this. Oh, this one does allow you to go by your finger. Okay, so you can do that or you can use the arrows. All right, that's where your sound adjustment is. And, you know, AM is going to work the same and Sirius XM isn't set up, but it's going to work exactly the same. You just have a few more buttons down here, but they're labeled channel forward, channel backwards instead of station. Um, um, and then you have some extra settings. But other than that, they work exactly the same. Okay, that was audio. 
phone. Right now, again, I'm hooked through Bluetooth. So if you're hooked to your phone through Bluetooth, this is what you're going to see. Okay. I have none of my contacts synced. Uh, so nothing will show up here, but yours would because you would want to sync those if you bought the car. So keypad there, any recent phone calls, any contacts, and then you can actually look at the phones that are added. Okay. I can hit the edit button here and I can rename it. I can say first to connect and then the secondary phone. Okay. So you can just choose which one, if you have two phones, which one is primary and which one is secondary. All right. Let's go back to home for a minute. Navigation. Now there are some cool things in here. Uh, so basically, you know, you've got a keyword or, or address thing that you can click on if you want to uh, program a route. Okay. However, voice command is the easiest. So I'm going to program a route using voice command. I'm using the voice command button on the right side of the steering wheel, and it's just a quick press and release. What would you like? Navigate to Dairy Queen. Okay, searching for Dairy Queen nearby. I'm finding more than one match because it may take you a while to choose. Please do so manually from the display. And you hit go. Please proceed to the highlighted road. Okay, so you still have to do some physical touch of the screen to, to finish the process, but you can select the address and, and you can read in an address, you know, uh, 1082 North uh, West Ridge Road and, and, you know, and then the city and state and it will, it will find it. So that's really cool. But that's how navigation works. You can, of course, zoom in, zoom out. You can also put your three fingers on here. If I do this right, yeah, see the screen tilt? That's cool. I love that. All right. Now, nice thing is you want to cancel route? route there it is. is now finished. Okay. These little three dots here are going to allow you to make some changes. So you can choose what the map looks like. You can decide what to show on your map. So, probably want fuel gas stations showing up. You maybe want fast food and uh, maybe coffee. And if you're touring around somewhere you don't know, maybe you want to get parking. So now, when I go back, you're going to see these things start to show up. Okay, so some of these show up as numbers and some show up as symbols, but if you just click on it, you can go down and say, what was number four? Well, that was a Jersey Mike Subs. Okay. So, but those things populate onto your screen, which just makes it easy um, for you. Let's say, if you, okay, I want to I wanna go there. Three minutes, you click there, and it's plotted route. Through the highlighted road. Route guidance is now finished. Okay. Now, there's, there's one more thing I want to show you, um, and that is, again, if I go to home and I go to settings, and I'm on apps and I go down to navigation. This is where you would make like one time changes. Like when you first got the car, you set up, basically set up your preferences for how navigation will work. Like, is it ever going to take you down a dirt road? If you don't want to be on dirt roads, this is where you change that. So first of all, you can set up your places. You can uh, look at map preferences. And it's just a simple click to slide those on or off. But route preferences, okay? Preferred route is either the fastest or the most eco-friendly. And you just choose the one that you want. What do you want to avoid on the route? Highways, unpaved roads, carpool lanes, ferries, and so on. Check mark the ones you want to avoid. Okay. But all of these are where you, again, it's just one time adjustments. And then pretty much the rest of the time you own the car, you won't touch it. Okay, all right, so here we have users. Now, um, all modern cars have driver profiles, and basically what they do is they allow you to pre-make settings, like all of your radio favorites, um, you may, sometimes even your climate temperature, uh, the adjustment, certainly the, the uh, adjustment of your seat, and if it's a powered uh, steering wheel, 
tilt and trim, then it will adjust that, it'll adjust your mirrors. So that when you get in and start the car or it recognizes you, it adjusts all those things to you. This is where you create that profile. And um, I can't go through and do one right now, but if you just click on that, it'll be step by step, just follow the directions on the screen. Um, okay, so the other neat thing is th this these settings can follow you. So if you go and, and rent another uh, Chevrolet that has System 3, infotainment system, um, once you get in, start it, you can sign in as a profile, and then it will pull down from the cloud all of your settings, at least for your infotainment. I don't know that it'll do your seats and everything else it does in your vehicle, but it'll do the infotainment things for sure. All right, so that is there. Uh, we're gonna come back to settings. Let's talk about Apple CarPlay for a minute because it is a wired connection, so all I have to do, since I'm already connected via Bluetooth, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug my phone into my cable, which is already plugged into the car. All right, and you notice now that Apple CarPlay lit up. So I'm gonna click on there. And this is absolutely fantastic. If if you've never used Apple CarPlay or Android Auto before, it's way better than Bluetooth. You can see it right here. It's basically showing me what's on my phone. Now, is it every app? Nope, but it's every app that will work on my phone with the system. You may have different apps that will show up because they also work with the system. Okay, so, but you'll notice, for instance, I've got Pandora, I've got Waze Navigation, if I want to use my own navigation, Sirius XM, I've got uh, NPR Radio, I've got Amazon Music, my calendar, um, Google Maps. I mean, it's, it's just, it's amazing. Now, um, these are your, kind of your most recently used items, but now, if I go to home for a minute and I press phone, you notice it goes back to the Apple CarPlay. It will no longer go to the Bluetooth. It has to be one or the other. But this looks exactly the same, pretty much as what you had in your car system, just in this screen. I will point out, if we go uh, all the way over to the right, you're gonna see a split screen. So, um, for some reason, oh, I know, because I had an update. Okay, but this is your navigation. This would be a voice command, like a Siri, and then this is your media. And so if I click on this, you saw it went to full screen. If I click on this, it goes to full screen. If you've used Apple CarPlay before, um, typically when you see the name of the vehicle and the icon in Apple CarPlay, that is what you push to go back to the home screen. However, this actually connects to the app, the, the My Chevrolet app that's on your phone which I don't have, so I can't log in to show you. But in order to exit Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're gonna to wanna to press the physical home button that's down here. Okay, we're gonna come back to settings. Climate, you have mostly physical buttons down below. And what I really love is they put a physical sync button in for you, but all your controls are here. Um, however, the one thing you don't have is controlling the rear climate. So if I go into climate and I can just click on rear and now I can adjust the rear climate because it's a tri-zone. And right here, if you don't want, if you have kids, you don't want them messing with the controls, you can just lock them. So they can spin them, you know, push them, whatever, but it's not going to change anything. And then if you press the sync button that shows up right over here, then you can sync all three zones to the same. All right. And then just click here for controlling the front. Again, for the front, you have mostly physical controls anyways. Okay, you do have a dedicated button to, for rear climate that takes you right there. No different than what I showed you a minute. Let's talk about the camera system. This has multiple views here. So this is the front camera currently, and it's kind of a rounded view. And then this is the back camera. So this is how you switch between them. If I go to this one, I get a little bit more rounded view, a little more bird's eye view, front and back. If I go here, let's see, I need to switch to the back one. This is gonna show a top down where my back is and top down where my front is. So you're just looking at the very front, bird's eye view right down from the top, that's really cool. All right, if I go, let's leave that one there. If I go here, 
kind of gives me a whole surround view from the back. And if I click it, I get a whole surround view from the front. Just a different angle. Depending on where you're parking, what you're doing, that could be very helpful. And this is, of course, your right side view and your left side view. It's coming off the bottom of your front uh, right and left mirrors. And then if you want a hitch view, you can click here. And if you had a hitch attached, you'd see it right there. Now, I'm going to press this button right here because I have a couple more. So this one will turn guidelines on. So if I go back to, say, this one. Now I can see those swiveling dynamic guidelines. And if I go back here, if I click there, I get a trailer guideline to back up. Okay, if I click this one, I get a split view. So now I get the bird's eye plus whatever I selected. So if I go back over here and I select the front, you notice that it's only changing this side because it'll, it'll keep this side. So just lots and lots of features, great camera uh, system, good resolution. All right, I'll go back to the home screen. The last thing we need to go through is just the settings. So this is where you can tweak and tune things uh, on your car. So it has system, apps, and vehicle. Under systems, we're gonna set basic things like time and date, I always showed you how to do that there. You can change the language right here, just click on what you want. You can manage phones. We've already seen that screen before. You can look at Wi-Fi networks. Okay, uh, under display. Okay. Uh, you can set it to auto, day, or night so that this screen gets brighter or darker and is readable and not annoying uh, at any time of day. I'd recommend leaving it on auto. If your touch screen is off and you're clicking a button and it's not where it is, then do calibrate touch screen and go through that process um, and you can um, reset that. I think that's really helpful depending on your eye-hand coordination. So if you're having trouble clicking on apps, making them work, go through that and it should help you get it fixed. Back here, I already talked about favorites and then here's where you can do over the air updates. Okay, all right. We've already talked about apps. Let's talk about vehicle. And there's so many in here, we won't go through them all. However, I will point out a couple. First of all, collision and detection system. This is some of your safety systems here. So lane change alert, park assist, and rear cross traffic. Simple click to turn it off, simple click to turn it back on again. This does have forward collision system and the front pedestrian detection. And you notice under here it says alert and alert and brake. So forward collision system, I click on it. I can set alert or alert and brake. Right, that means if you have it on set alert, if it detects a collision, it's going to warn you, but it's not going to help you uh, brake. Leave it on alert and brake, and it's going to help you brake too. Okay, front pedestrian detection again, off completely, alert only, or alert and brake. I'd suggest you leave that on, on alert and brake. Okay, uh, then I want to, let's see, do um, comfort and convenience. So you can set your uh, hands-free lift gate and trunk control here. So you can have it open and closed or open only or off completely. So the hands-free, when you put your foot underneath it and kick underneath it, it opens and closes. So you can kick once for open, once for close, or it only opens or that's off completely. Reverse tilt mirror. When you put the car in the reverse, okay, um, you can decide do both mirrors tilt down to, to help me see? Do does just the driver, just the passenger, or do none of them? That's none of them. Driver and passenger mirrors, driver only mirror, and then passenger mirror. And when you put it back into drive, it'll tilt back up to where it would normally be. And so that's the infotainment system three on this beautiful uh, 2020 Chevy Traverse. And this again is the premier trim level. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.